Hey there, everybody. Hope you guys are doing well today. Uh, thank you for uh, joining me. Uh, as you can see by all the information in the description and by the title, we got a auction coming up, and I got to adjust the lighting on my camera here. But this is just going to be a preview auction, so I just put the link to the catalog in the chat. Also, put, got the link to the auction catalog in the description below. Um, so if if you take a look at those lists, I'll be on here for as long as we need to be, whether it's, you know, 20 minutes or whether it's a couple hours. If you see anything in that catalog you want me to pull out and show under the camera or under the microscope or anything and get a closer look or to talk about it more, just, um, just let me know and we can do that. And let me adjust the lighting just a little bit on this camera. There we go. Sorry about that. Usually have some of that adjusted before the stream starts, but we've got a lot of people here so far. Good. Good to see you guys. Kevin Speaks was here. Bibby was in here. Young Coin Hunter, Arizona Coins, NCF. Got the bot working, which is surprising. First try. So far, so good. Metal Detecting Channel. Thanks a lot. Um, D Reese is here. Thomas. Con Nine's going to behave. All right. Um, I, I just timed him out though, so he's got to wait another 300 seconds to say that he thinks something again. But no, I'm just kidding you, Con Non. I didn't do that yet. So <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming in again. In the um, chat, I just posted the link to the auction catalog, which I got a printout copy of right here. Um, got all the coins here. If there's anything in this list you guys want to take a look at, I'd be happy to show you guys or let you know my thoughts on them or we can do some close-ups uh temporal coins good to see you it says large auction yeah it ends up being what how many did i end up with on here a little over 100 108 lots total i mean i know there's a lot of other auctions on youtube there's probably going to be a lot of other auctions that day when on saturday when i run this and probably even while i'm running this just because so many people are doing auctions and there's so many channels on here and there's only a limited amount of time to actually do the streaming so um i know there's a lot of other auctions you guys know them too they usually a lot of them will do 20 30 40 items and it takes them seems to take three or four hours to do it if you've i've only done two auctions so far if you've been parts of those um you know that's not the way i do it i'll i'll blow through these 108 uh, items in the same time the other channels do you know 30 or 40 because i mean you got to be quick in bidding because I'm gonna I'm not gonna you know leave things open for five minutes each or whatever. It's just gonna be you either want to bid on it or you don't. If if you're not bidding, we'll move on to the next one. Now that probably costs me a few dollars because if I sat around and waited and just talked, maybe somebody else would eventually bid or try to snipe. You know what? I'd rather sell the hundred items and do that than to you know squeeze out every penny on thirty or forty and take up a lot of time with people. That's just the what. That's just my uh, my thinking on that, um, and, and I know that hurts some people. I've had I've had uh, some people mention that you know you have different internet speeds, so sometimes you need that extra time. Well, if that's an issue for you, and you know that like in the past two auctions I've had that has been an issue, and you've missed things because of that, remember with my auctions, you can take a look at the catalog. Again, we're not doing the auction until Saturday, so you got you know all day tomorrow, Friday, and then most Saturdays. So you got three days to look at it if there's if, if there's something you really want email me by friday night what lot number and what your bid is and i'll make sure that bid gets executed and that goes say, the same if you can't make it to the auction at all like if you know you're gonna be busy or you know you got there's somebody else auctioning that i don't even know about at the same time um and you'd rather be in that stream fine that's i'm not gonna be mad but if there's one or two items you really want email me your bid and um We'll make sure those get executed. All right, so I guess I'll uh, give you guys time to look through that catalog, but in the meantime, I'm just going to probably start showing a few coins. Um, let's see, what's good here? This is a cool one. This one's in the auction. It's a 10-ounce 1992 Australian Kookaburra silver. And this one's in the auction. It's towards the end because I can go U.S. coins and then all through them, and then I go world coins towards the end. But this one I got a deal on from the local coin dealer because it's in the original capsule, but as you can see, it's only half of the capsule. 
If I go like this, the coin comes right out. So the capsule broke, and you just can't get the duplicate capsules too easy for these. So they gave me a deal on it. I'm like, hey, it's still a really cool 10-ounce silver piece. These things, um, up until very recently at least, sell for $200 to $250 on eBay. 1992 is an earlier date, and 10 ounce is a little bit special. And uh, I don't even know what I started this at. What are we starting this one at? This is going to be lot number 80, and we're going to start it at $190. And I think it's worth about... 225 to 250 so that's gonna be a fun one temporal are you clear to bid is there something else you need to do temporal I don't require anybody to pre-register I don't make anybody pay me in advance or anything I don't I don't go for that I mean I understand some of the other channels and the reasons why they do that and that's fine um, but no anybody can bid here the thing is is that you have to pay before I mail it out that's the thing so that's uh, that's how that works and, you know, if you don't pay for some reason and I end up having to sell things elsewhere or later, then I probably won't take your bids in the next auction. So I'll give everybody a chance. That's that's all. So Silver Nitrate's here. Thanks for coming in. I saw a couple others come in. Coin Fanatic. Uh, Opportunity Knox wants to show us that priceless counter stamp barber. Well, let's do that. You know what? I'm going to try uh, bringing up the full screen good camera here. Hold on just a second. Let's give this a shot. We'll do this, and then we'll do this. So that here, if you see this here, this is just a piece of brass with the stamp in it, just so you guys get an idea of what you're going to be looking at. That's a, uh, a, a stamp that my friend SoCal Box Breaks, uh, who has a channel here, made to make uh, bullion pieces. So it's got Michael Kittle Rare Coins, 999 Fine, it says 1909. And then on the other side... You know, it's a good for one dollar in trade stamp, just kind of a generic stamp there. So that's what it looks like in brass. But then we had the idea, hey, let's take like a really like um, low grade barber quarter and um, stamp it on there. And let me see what lot number that is. That's right at the end. So I should be able to find this without too much trouble, you would think, right? It should be the very last item, but let me find that for us. And sorry, I'm can't look at chat right this second while I'm doing this but so here's what it looks like on a 1909 barber quarter so this works out because barber quarters when they get worn down are pretty flat and um, so it lets you stamp the full design pretty cool so just thought it was kind of fun to do and we've also got here I'll show real quick we got um it, here's what it looks like pressed into a big chunk of lead so you get the full detail there So it's kind of just like a prototype did make a couple pieces of silver so far just prototypes I want to start like offering like a one ounce silver round or and maybe some one ounce copper rounds to people but just haven't really made any yet so this is just what I have available and Only had a couple of them made so far so I figured to offer one of them here in the auction just kind of for fun to see if anybody wanted it and you can kind of see the faint impression of the the one dollar in there with the board around the full full reverse part didn't strike up all the way though but it's kind of a fun something fun and really you know not that difficult or pretty easy to make when all you got to do is find the host coin and stamp it instead of having to like pour a you know around that size to do it so very very cool no thanks for asking about that one and i just put that and i figured we'll start it i think what is that what i wrote in the auction catalog i don't even remember yeah i wrote that we'll start it at a dollar and i didn't know what to put for the you know top price uh, or the estimated value so i called it priceless why not right <laughs> can i show lot number 12 ben marler wants to see a, absolutely let me open up my catalog here and We'll find out what lot 12 is. Lot 12 is a 1926 Lincoln Wheat Scent in an old green PCGS holder. And I say here I got, so in the catalog this gives it a chance to talk about that where I say multiple examples may be available. That's just to let you know that when you bid, say you, you bid on this lot number 12 and you end up winning it for, you know, $5, the opening bid. I might say, hey, I got a couple of these available. Do you want any more? Or I might offer it to the underbidder. Um, just depends on 
how it goes and so but just to make you aware of that so what it is is this is a PCGS holder with a green label all it is is a 1926 circulated Lincoln wheat scent labels pretty simple PCGS authentic 1926 Lincoln scent wheat reverse and that's pretty much all there is it's pretty well circulated um, they're probably like good to VG maybe fine coins in these nothing nothing high grade and what these were done these were done as samples and they were um, a lot of these were made back in the early 1990s I believe and they were made to be put into coin collecting kits that one dealer was developing and that he had uh, that he had sold but they made way more of these than they sold of the coin collecting uh, kits for people so um, some of these became available you know afterwards and now people that collect different sample slabs so where you see sometimes they say sample coins that they give out at shows just as a, an example of their holders um, a lot of the people that collect the sample slabs collect these and there are different dates this one's 1926 you can find these they're mostly dates in the 1920s I've never seen a 1922 because that's a real tough date but I've seen everything from you know 1920 up through 1929 there's a few of them dated in the teens like I think I've seen a 1917 and 1919 but most of them are dates in the 20s the ones I have are all 1926 so hopefully that uh, answers your question there Benjamin Marler if you have any other questions on it please let me know wheat scent that's been in a slab for 20 plus years pretty much my own coin hunter and like I said, these were just, you know, probably really cheaply done in the 1990s for this dealer that was putting together a, a coin collecting uh, kit for people. And I think I, there's, there's a picture in the, um, there's actually a book on sample slabs by David Schwager. And uh, I believe in that book on sample slabs, he talks about these. And he also mentions, uh, or he might even show a picture of the coin collecting kit and discusses like how that was all put together in more detail so again I got a bot set up I set up night bot so I'm not really good at it but I put a few commands in here so if you haven't seen we can put do that and should bring up the catalog hopefully that works so there'll be a nice little link that should pop up eventually with the catalog looks like night bot already spammed you guys about my Amazon page which is kind of fun so okay we'll see if that works um, let me know if you hey Lincoln Central good to see you thanks for coming on in remember if there's anything else in the catalog just let me know and we'll be happy to show you what it is oh just but until anybody mentions a lot I'll uh, find some other stuff to, that I think are cool and I'll show one of them that's pretty cool is lot number 91 it's a sealed up roll of the Mexican one ounce silver from 1985 so that's kind of fun those are the one ounce silver Onza designs, 1985. And the way they do these rolls, if you haven't seen them before, um, it's like kind of like a foil paper. Tape it on one side, and then the other side it's open, but there is a clear piece of clear plastic there protecting the coin. So it's just kind of a different way to do to do a roll. So that's kind of fun. And I'm getting pop-ups blocking the chat there. Hello, Lisa Plusky. How you doing? Thanks for coming on in. Hope you don't mind so we aren't streaming each other and moving normal Saturday. To... Oh, Silver Nitrate, I didn't even really realize you were doing an auction then. So, I mean, if, if you know, sorry about that. I hope if you, if you move yours, that's, you know, up to you. I mean, I'm not going to, I won't be upset either way. I'm sorry about that. If um, I, I actually, right before I did this, I was in another chat and... I had originally been thinking about doing it a little bit later. Like here I said I'm going to start it at 12 p.m. my time and 3 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. I was going to do it a couple hours later, but I actually saw it was a Liberty Seeker in another chat saying he was going to do an auction Saturday a couple hours after where I was going to start. So I'm like, you know what, I could probably bump mine up a couple hours and so I'm not right on top of his. But you know you know as well, Silver Nitrate, it's like there's so many people, so many people uh, streaming all the time. It's probably impossible especially once you get to be a larger channel and follow a lot of people so um like i could probably click who's streaming live right now and there's probably five or six people streaming right now that now i'm streaming over so it's just uh unfortunate the way that works but hey i appreciate that and again sorry i didn't uh 
Didn't know that. So um, next up is the C.C. Morgan. John Wolf wants to take a look at. And just so you guys can follow along in the catalog there, that is going to be lot number 46. It's a 1879 C.C. over C.C. It's a repunched mint mark. They also call it the capped die. Uh, Morgan Silver Dollar. I graded it about fine details. It does have some rim damage and cleaning. It's a real low mintage under a million pieces. And the Red Books, the lowest price they list in a Red Book on it in VF is uh, $335. Bucks. So we're going to start this one at a dollar. And I think it's going to be, I think it's worth around $150 to $200. So I'll give you a quick look just under the webcam. That's the basic look of it. And then I'll pull up the other camera and give you a, a little sharper look at it. So that's the, you know, look under this camera just so you guys get an idea of it. And then I'll move these here. And I got this camera that I'm, this other camera I'm using is my real good camera, but the focus on it's kind of tough. So, uh, so I got to set it there for a second until it focuses, but there we go. Hi there, Pink Floyd. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Mikey, good to see you. So that's the obverse. You can see it's got some hits and maybe a little bit of a light cleaning on it. But there are some rim dings on it. And we'll flip it over and take a look at the other side. So yeah, it's not the, you know, it's not a very nice one, but it's a... Uh, it's going to be one of the cheaper uh, 1879 Carson City Morgans that you'll be able to get, for sure. And again, in VF condition, the Red Book lists these at $335. Bucks. That's the lowest it goes. And I think this retail has this is as a retail value in the $150 to $200 range. That's just my, uh, my estimate on it. And it is the cap die. You can kind of see it there if you look real close. There's like a little bump on top of the CC. That's the other mint mark. I could show under my microscope too, which, you know what? Unless someone else has asked for a couple other coins to look at, let's uh, go ahead and try to do that. So I'll move that dose peso that has nothing to do with anything over there. So we'll put that there, and then we'll go full screen on the microscope to see if I'm probably going to have to focus a little bit there we go you can kind of see it there I know I could get a lot closer on this but I think you guys got the idea all right very good and again if you guys uh, have any questions on any of the lots please let me know and I just minimized something I didn't want to minimize there, so that's not good. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, what else am I missing in the chat there? Young Coin Hunter, could you show lot number 18, the proof Lincoln scent? Yes, I can. There we go. 1963 Lincoln scent and proof 66 cameo. Now, at the time, they didn't, I think nowadays they would actually call this Proof 66 Red Cameo, but at the time they graded this, they didn't just put the RD on there because anything that they graded Cameo or Deep Cameo for Lincoln Sense, everybody just knew was red, so they just didn't put it on the label. I believe they do put it on the label today. So it's Old Green Holder, and it's got pretty strong Cameo, and it's a nice coin, and I will uh, show it under the other camera there for you. Hopefully, I mean, you guys let me know if this bothers you, the bouncing back and forth between cameras, but I think... Uh, this camera here gives you a little bit better look at things and way better than the microscope does. At least it looks good on my screen, I know that. You guys are just missing the, um, the music back that I usually have in my videos, right? There's that. I'll go back to here. Very cool, young coiner. Thanks for asking about that. 
Mikey wants to know, do I have the Strike It Rich with Pocket Change book? Can I show you a list of errors? I do not have that book. I don't. I, the, when I look for uh, um, different varieties, I usually use the Cherry Pickers guides, or I use, um, just look on PCGS and look up the different varieties they show in, in CoinFAX. And you know what? That's one thing I forgot to add to the auction catalog. I will be adjusting the catalog, because right now, as you can see, I updated it as of you know today at 11 a.m. Um, I do have a couple old copies of the Cherry Pickers Guide that I'll be adding to this. So if you've been looking for um, older copies of the Cherry Pickers Guide, I just forgot to um, list them in the catalog. But let me grab those real quick just so you guys know what, what, what I have. Got three different copies here. I'll show the oldest one first. And these will all start at a dollar each. And I know some of these go for crazy money because it's hard to find and they're been out of print. This here is the fourth edition volume one. And let's see what it covers. It covers everything from half cents up to Jefferson Nichols. So that's 4th edition volume 1. We also have 4th edition volume 2. And that covers everything half dimes all the way through gold and commemorative. And they're in pretty good shape. And then I also have a copy of 5th edition volume 2. So again, this is just a little bit newer than the last one. And it's half dimes through the gold coins, commemoratives, and bullion. So, and they're all, they're all in great shape. So if you guys have been looking for... A copy of the cherry pickers guide and you don't want to wait until the new ones eventually come out whenever they do come out i think maybe in the fall but who knows now you know with the, everything that's been going on and um and you don't want to pay hundreds of dollars on ebay or amazon we got some copies of the cherry pickers guide so yeah mikey and a lot of the varieties even in some even some of the cherry pickers varieties if i can't see it with like a 10 times loop and it's hard to figure out then i just pretty much don't look for it anymore. I mean, I figure if you can't even see it with a 10 times loop, then that means most collectors probably won't be able to see it e any either. And then that means most collectors aren't going to care about it at all. And that means almost always that the value will be very low. There Now that's sometimes there's a very small minor error that there's a handful of collectors out there who do care about, but once they have their copy of it, they're not going to buy another. So it's, you know, I'd, I'd rather focus the efforts and time on uh, looking for the more major varieties. So, Metal Detecting Channel says, this preview is cool. Hey, well, I, I mean, I like to do it this way. I mean, this is only going to be the third auction I've done. So I like to make up a catalog so it's not just the people that happen to show up on Saturday. Like Silver Nitrate pointed out, there's other people streaming at the same time or right around there. And this auction might take me three, four, five hours, depending on how fast we go and how much bidding there is. And um, I don't expect everybody to sit through all of it. So if you really want something, you have the catalog now. If you really want this 19, or lot number 71, the 62 proof set, and you know you're not going to be there, you can email me your bid right now, as long as it's over 15 bucks. And when the time comes, I'll put your bid in. If someone outbids you, you, you lose it. If nobody outbids you, you win. It's that, it's that easy. D. Reese says, what are you asking for the cherry pickers guides? I think I'm just going to start them at a dollar in the auction. So if you really want a copy of a cherry pickers guide, and I'll have to add those, and I'll do that, um, and it'll automatically update the file once. And you'll have to re-download the file, of course. But uh, remember, I got 4th edition, volume 1, 4th edition, volume 2, and then 5th edition, volume 2. So... So we're just going to start them in a buck and then go from there. And hopefully they sell for quite a bit more than a dollar because that wouldn't be too fun. But Marley and T would love one. Well, you keep keep note of it. Or if you know you really want, you know, one of them, then you could you could email me your bids right now on them. That's easy. But I, um, you just have to like I don't have a lot number for those in here yet. Though, so I'll have to update. And since you already have these in lot numbers right now. I, uh, when I add those, those will be added right to the very end. So they'll be like lots 109, 110, and 111, just because I forgot to put them in the first copy. I don't want to put them in the middle there and then change all of the, 
you know, lot numbers. So if you lot, if you so when people email me things, I, you know, the lot numbers that you see on this list will be good, good to go with. Wait, what? What are we doing, Marley and T? Um, I'll put the catalog link in the channel there again in the chat. So once that pops up, Nightbot will tell you the link. You can download the catalog. Um, I'll be doing an auction on Saturday. Right now, I'm just showing off uh, some of the lots that people, if people want to take a look at something in advance. And I do this stream this way to give everybody a chance to find out that I'm doing the auction, to find out that I have a catalog you can look at, and to have time to figure out if you want to bid on anything. And if you know you can't make it to the auction, you can then email me your bids, and I'll execute those bids on your behalf. Lot number 31 I did not show yet, John Scott. That is the gold mercury dime, and I will get that right now. Let me move some of these over to the side. Right there, there's the original box that came in from the U.S. Mint. And it's a box inside of a box, and then inside this box, guess what? It's a box. And then inside this box, uh oh, there's a certificate. A little piece of uh, protective fabric and then you can this thing here it's got magnet in it it stands up so for display but then you can also take it out all together it's a one tenth ounce gold 2016 w mercury dime and that's just then this capsule pops right out so you can you know look at it one tenth ounce pure gold And I will show that under the other camera in case you wanted to see that. Let me just bring that up. And so this one here, the US Mint sold these back in 2016 for the 100th anniversary of the design and you got the W mint mark down there too 2016 W the mint sold these at two hundred nine dollars ninety five cents plus shipping uh, right now they've been going on eBay in the two hundred to two hundred fifty dollar range almost always in the two twenty five to two fifty range and um, this one here I'm gonna start right at a uh, two hundred ten bucks which is just basically the same price you would have had to pay the mint back in uh, 2016 So, if you, and that comes with the box, with all the paperwork, the certificate, everything that it came with. And there's the certificate, just so you can see it, a little booklet about it. And that is that. But yeah, they did a really great job. On the dime in particular, they also did our the Standing Liberty Quarter and the Walking Liberty Half Dollar in Gold, but those are a little bit smaller than the real coins. This is actually a just a hair smaller than an actual mercury uh, silver mercury dime but it's close enough that when you're looking at it it looks just like a mercury dime but because of the, of the gold weights they decided to use the standing liberty quarter gold is noticeably smaller than a real quarter and when you look at the walking liberty half in gold it's way smaller than a half dollar would be and it just kind of looks weird in my opinion but but the dime is a cool one very very nice Love that coin. Well, it's going to be for sale on Saturday. But like I said, if, if you know you can't make it Saturday, go ahead and you can send me uh, bids by email starting uh, as soon as you're ready. Not a problem. And I just accidentally closed my chat window, so now I'm watching an ad to be able to get the video back up. Sorry about that. <laughs> Skip that, go back to live chat. Okay. Again, the auction catalog is there. If anybody has any questions on anything, wants to see any of the lots, let me know. Or anything else. I haven't done a live stream in about, in probably, I think a little over a month. So, you know, I'm glad to see some of you guys come, ch come check this out and say hello. Always good to hang out and see ya. I did set up Nightbot here, so that's kind of fun. So I'll show you some of the commands there and I guess test it because I've never even tested this before except that, you know, I, I had it show a, 
the catalog link earlier so I got it set to show you guys my website if we type in website and we'll see I think there's quite a bit of delay on this too unfortunately Sorry about so I'll just do the commands kind of one at a time there we go check out my website kittlecoins.com perfect and um, and it's got all the other stuff there so PayPal address I can show you guys my PayPal Everyone else is out buying toilet paper. Yeah, Condon, that's probably why, uh, what is there, there's only 20-some people or whatever. That's probably what's going on. <laughs> Pink Floyd wants to show uh, lots number 24 and 25. I will show that, but let me first show you my Facebook. <laughs> okay, lot number 24 and 25. Let's see what those are. A couple three-cent nickels coming right up. Bam and bam. You should auction a roll of toilet paper. Young coiner, I don't know if anybody can afford that. It's valued too highly right now. So right here, here's 24 to 1865 three cent nickel and NGC fine 15. It's a nice first year of issue type coin. And there's an uncertified example, the lot after. And I will pull those up on the other camera so we can get close looks at them. Let me do that there and do this. So here's the NGC Fine 15. Yeah, gone on exactly. You can get the toilet paper certified. Not by PCGS though. You have to send it to their. Uh, Documents and a baseball card authenticators PSA. So it's just a nice, you know, type coin. It's got some light hairlines on it, um, but it's, there you go. So that's that one. And then here's the uncertified one. We've got to let it focus. There we go. This one might just be a tad nicer overall, but. Definitely got some clash marks in the fields, which is very common on a three cent nickel. So there we go. Uh oh, you guys figured out some of the commands there. What else did I make a command on? Let me figure this out. Um, I know there's more than that. But I never got to test. Ah, I just closed the chat again. I keep doing that. <laughs> um, eBay is one of the commands. Let me try that one. I think that'll... I bet it'll go tell you what my eBay page is. All right. Um, that looks nice. Every time you're showing a coin, you got the music stuck in your head. Yeah, exactly. I remember uh, Sheldon did a video not too long ago of something and sent him and... He had that music in the background too. He was stealing my trademark there. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of fun. And I did put a special one in there uh, for a uh, young coin hunter in particular. So if you type in uh, the word scent, you'll see that. So I'm a true numismatist. Michael Kittle Rare Coins speaks the truth and is the number one person to join Team Scent. There you go. So if anybody wants to join Team Scent, we don't call them pennies. They say Scent right on them. Lincoln Central is going to join Team Penny. Although deep in their heart, Lincoln Central Coin knows they are incorrect in doing so. They are the number one person to join Team Penny. Aw, oh, man. I don't know. I'm Team Scent forever. Okay, so that's about the only fun one I put in. Sorry, I was trying to be team sent all the way. Yep, yep. Well, you can put your vote in anytime. <laughs> all right, if, again, the catalog's there. It's in the description. If there's anything else you want to take a look at, just uh, let me know. There's a lot of other cool stuff here. Let me see if I can find something else. Um, we got tons of, we got Silver Eagles in uh, MS-70 condition. Got a lot of certified Morgan dollars, if um, anybody's interested in Morgan dollars. Got a real low-grade uh, trade dollar. I'll show that one. This is lot number 45. And I got to be able to 
can see what I'm doing here. All right, Young Coin Hunters on Team Scent. All right. So this here is an 1877 Philadelphia trade dollar. It's in about VG condition. It's got the full rims, so it's a little better than good. Um, but it's been cleaned. But it's a genuine trade dollar. And I'll show it under the close-up there just so you guys can see. And, of course, when I get on live, people are trying to call me, but they can leave messages. That's cool. So we'll go to the close-up, and i got to bring that up there. So there we go. So it's a genuine trade dollar. It's got some light scratches, definitely been cleaned. But we're starting it, and I think I said we're starting it at only 60 bucks. So if you look in your red books where the trade dollars start, they're all in the hundreds of dollars and probably up to $200 if you want one with any you know, details at all. So we're going to be starting this one at 60 bucks. So it'd be a pretty good filler in uh, anybody's typeset until you're willing to spend you know, 150 to 200 bucks on something better. At least that's what I think. I don't know. What do I know? So that's that. Somebody's wanting to see lot number one. We can do that. We can see lot number one. That's easy because I know exactly where that's at. It's right at the front of the box. All right. 1798 large scent. First hairstyle. It has good details and it has been tooled. So when they use the word tooled, it doesn't mean that there's huge gouges or it just means any time metal has been moved on the surface of the coin. So I'll show you what it is. So it means a little bit more than just, you know, cleaning. It means somebody was like re-engraving some of the detail and trying to make things pop out. So we'll show that here. And there we go. So you can see right under the neck, there's some like lines there where they strengthen the bottom of the bust line between the date and the neck just to make the date pop out a little bit more. And there's some scratches going across the surface. But I mean, it's got the full date. You can see full liberty. You got the whole outline and you can see some of the details of her face. It's a 1798. And it's not a penny. It's a one cent piece. There's some minor corrosion. You see the little bit of pitting on the reverse, but you can make out all of the legend, all the details. Um, now, of course, if it was didn't have those issues, it'd be worth several hundred dollars. And um, this one's gonna start much, much cheaper. What are we starting it at? We're starting it at 60 bucks. I think in the condition it's worth right now, it's probably worth in the 75 to one one hundred dollar range retail. But we're going to start it at 60 bucks. Again, this would be one that you could crack out of this holder and stick into a, into a typeset if you've got that spot missing. And Young Coin Hunter wants to see the reverse again. You see there it says one cent at the bottom. One out of a hundred. That means it's one per cent. Not one per petty. It's one per cent. So there you go. Lincoln Central had this one back when he was a kid in 1798. Probably bought a full meal or something back then. So, what year are the Peruvian currency? And then you see my camera go nuts there, so we'll switch back over here. We will check that out. I'll show you that. Sorry if I missed the question just a minute ago. Um, let me try to find what I'm looking for here. That is right here. I believe they're all from the late 80s. So, this here's the Peruvian set, and let me just open up my catalog and let you guys all know what lot number this is in case you're watching this later or, or if you're following along at home now. This is lot number 104, Peru Paper Money Collection, Nine Notes. So it's a nice little spiral bound booklet, Collection de Billetes, Peru. It starts out with a 10 and this one's dated 1987. You got a 50, the 100 and these are dated, sorry, 1987 and they actually put the month into the, the, June 26th 87 June 26th 87 you got a 500 same date this one's June 28th 1988 for the thousand the 5000s 1988 the 10000s 1988 the 50000s 1988 and the $100,000 note is 1989 
So I'm guessing, uh, this, I don't know if this is the full run of all the notes they had in that period, but it goes all the way from a 10 up to 100,000. And it's just a real cool little spiral bound with the plastic in there. Nice little collection. And we're starting that one at, what are we starting that one at? 10 bucks. So pretty, pretty cool. I think so, at least. I don't know. Hopefully somebody else thinks it's cool. Kanan, gotta go later. Thanks, thanks for coming on in. Appreciate it. Hey, if you guys haven't been, uh, haven't subscribed to Confrontational Nonconformist yet, grab him up right there. But remember, only go to his channel if you are over eighteen. That's not please, please if you're over eighteen. That's definitely only if you're over eighteen. So no kids. Yeah, that is a neat set. I thought so too, Pink Floyd. Thanks. Um, try to come up with some different fun stuff if we can. Here's one that I wanted to show at least some point during the stream, and I'll try to get a lot number here for you. It's lot number 69, the 1916 year set. So that's this right here. Just, you know, circulated coins from 1969. You got the half, quarter, dime, buffalo, nickel, and the Lincoln cent. But um, this holder is real scratched up too, but if we slide off the cover, all of a sudden the coins get a little, a little more clear. Um, this is cool. I wanted to point it out because the 1916 half does have the obverse D mint mark. So it's a 16 D, which is a semi key date in the series. So that's kind of cool. And I'll, sh I'll show that up full screen since it's a little bit more of a valuable coin. And uh, some people might need that one. So you can see right there, it's got the D obverse mint mark. Every 1916 is either a key. Yeah, pretty much. But the ones with mint marks are pretty good. I think so. Yeah, I'll put that cover back on. And I'll show you guys the catalog again. Anybody wanted to see that? What else do I got in there? Oh, I got one of these too. Hold on. I can spam you guys with a whole bunch of stuff. I even got one of these now. I got me a Twitter. All right. Very cool. Lincoln Central Coins. You're a fan of these. These are Eisenhower dollars. And this one here is going to be lot number 59. It's a 1976. S bicentennial, 40% silver. They graded it PCGS gem uncirculated. And it's also been autographed by the coin's designer, Dennis R. Williams. So, Young Coin Hunter, the Instagram is here. I didn't make a command for it, though. so Because I just started Instagram this weekend, actually. Um, but I can do something for us here. Let's see. I can do this. I can do this and I can do that and come back here and then do one of those. Boom, boom. There's my Instagram link, Young Coin Hunter. Paula wants to see the 1879. Absolutely. Let me get it under the other camera and switch the screen there. And thanks for coming on in, Paula. I appreciate that. So there it is. It's been lightly cleaned, maybe even moderately cleaned. It's got some rim dings. They don't show too bad on the obverse side. When we flip it over, the rim dings are a lot more noticeable. There's the CC. It is the capped, you know, CC over CC or the capped die. It's got the rim damage. It's not the, hasn't been the most loved coin over the years, but it's the real deal. And it's probably going to sell for about a third of the price of a undamaged coin. I believe we're starting this one at a dollar. I think it should sell for somewhere around 150 bucks. I know the lowest price they show in the red book, and but that's for a v VF20, is uh, $335. And this one's a little lower than VF details, but it's uh, still there. It's 1879cc. back and my 
chat stopped working. It says unable to connect. And hopefully, Paula Bloom, cap to die. Just it's a CC over CC. So they say it's like made by rusted die too. There's different things you can see on it. I've read it as a C. The Red Book calls it CC over CC now. Um, but when you look at the, and I'm, you know, I got the microscope here. But I can try to show it again. Let's see if we can. Let me bring that up full screen for us. At the very tops of the CCs, there's like little bumps that kind of look like caps. That's that's the way I've that's what I've heard of it. I don't know. I don't know if that's what everybody else says about it, but that's what someone told me long ago. And but I'm not really a silver dollar collector. But there's definitely stuff going on. And this is actually, when you when you have the cap die, in my experience, these are actually a little bit more common than the, uh, than the clear ones. If you have actual nice clear CC, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit more rare to have a clear one. All right, we'll go back to this here. Perfect. Yeah, it's pretty common to find the, that one silver coin. And, it, and like I said, it's almost harder to find a clear a one that's cleared. Ant Orta, thanks for coming in. Glad you made it. Um, again, there's an auction catalog in the description below. And if anybody has any questions on any of the items, let me know. And we can take a look at them now. If you don't come up with those questions until you're watching this later and we're not live anymore, go ahead and send me an email. Uh, my email's in the description of all the videos and on the about page and... Should be real easy for everybody to find. Silver's below 12 bucks. Where's the bottom? Pink Floyd, uh, as far as the silver market right now, um, it's it's just not real. I mean, there's nowhere right now you can buy physical silver for under $12. There's no one selling it. It's it's made up. It's, it, the market is almost like meaningless right now. If you try to go buy silver, everyone's going to be charging you $15, $16, $17 an ounce. Right here in this room with like 18 people, I'm sure every one of us would want to go buy a ton of silver right now at 12 or $13 an ounce even, but we can't. We're all buyers right now, and there's not one seller anywhere. All the big bullion guys either took the coins off their websites or raised their prices or the premiums high enough. So I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense that there's a buy and an ask price in the $11, $12 range when nobody's selling and everybody would be buying. It's not a real market, so... So they can, they, can, they can make the price on the market go to $8 tomorrow or $7 or $12, whatever it is. It doesn't matter because none of us are going to be able to buy at that price and none of us are willing to sell at that price, you know? So, I mean, we're all willing to buy at that price, I mean, but we can't. So it's not a real market. It's just, it's, it doesn't make any sense to me. But, you know, you look up any of the stocks, though, if I want to go buy a share of Boeing stock right now, the bid and ask price of those are real. I could actually sell my stock if I own it. And I could actually buy stock if I wanted more. But for silver, you can't do that. It's not a real market. Not as far as when it comes to the physical bullion, it's not. If I should say that. But. JM has no bar. Yeah, they don't have them on their webpage anymore, but they have them, believe me. So what happens, and it's not just right now with all the craziness where it drops so much. Anytime precious metals take a big dive down suddenly... Pretty much every coin shop in the country all of a sudden isn't selling any or they say they're sold out or whatever they want to say. Um, because they're all hoping it jumps right back up and they don't have to take a loss on the stuff they bought weeks ago. Um, but now if silver stays at the $12 range for a few weeks, then all of a sudden you'll start seeing them sell. Because what's going to happen is right now... If you go into your local coin shop, they're only going to pay you 12 bucks an ounce or maybe a little bit less. So once they buy enough from the public over the next week or two at these low prices, then they'll start selling it back out at their normal premiums. But until that happens, they're just not going to sell what they already have. Unless, they, unless it goes for weeks and weeks and weeks, and then they have to start selling some of their inventory to get some cash flow, that could happen. But... In the short run, this always happens when prices drop. And then if price goes right back up, you'll have that same stuff that all of a sudden you didn't see this week. We'll be right back in the dealer cases and right back on the websites. Now on um, 
Monday morning, I was able to get a little bit of silver from Atmex before they raised their premiums because they have it all set to be automatic. So I was able to get a few five ounce silver American Beautiful pieces. Now I was I still paid about fourteen and a half dollars an ounce on them because the premiums on that stuff. But I mean, right now they you can't even get close to that on those, even though the price is a little bit lower. So I was able to buy a little bit, but not tons. Wish I could have bought more, but. Maybe a week from now I'll be thankful I didn't buy more. Who knows? People would be bonkers to sell right now. But Paula, that that's that's what the buy and ask means when there's when you look at the price there. There's the or the bid and the ask, I'm sorry. There's a bid, people willing to pay the bid price, and the ask are people supposedly willing to sell at that price. So if the ask price says right now silver's at twelve dollars and the buy is or the bid is at eleven ninety, supposedly there's a bunch of people out there willing to sell at twelve bucks an ounce. Don't know where they are, and no, no, nobody in the coin business that I know knows where they're at. So, yeah, I was able to, Colin, I was able to get a, um, I bought five of the 2020 America the Beautiful America, uh, American Samoa, the ones with the bats on them. So that was kind of fun. So I was able to get those for like 75 bucks a coin, which is like real cool. Maybe you can do a grab bag for the auction in the future that you made. Um, I don't know what you mean. Like, like, just put some stuff in a bag and not even let you know what's in there? I mean, I don't know how that would work. Same thing happened when... Yeah, pretty much. And, it's in, in a, and now right now it's a dramatic um, price move, but a lot of times you'll see shops, even when silver goes down like 75 cents in a day or a dollar, which is a, usually a huge move, if you go right away to those shops, they'll go, oh, no, we're all sold out. And then when it goes back up 50 cents or a dollar the next day... Oh yeah, we have some silver again. You know, it's kind of, kind of. What do you mean? It's kind of the way it goes. I don't know. Throw one of those into the auction and see where it goes. Well, yeah, Colin, I don't have them yet. They're gonna, it's going to take up because when you buy, you either got to. I didn't want to pay with credit card or anything like that because they charge extra fees. So I had to mail them a check and then they have to wait till that clears. And so I won't have them for another week or two. So, which is fine. Yeah, 88, because what, what it was, coin, is when I locked mine in, the premium was only about $2.5 over the spot price. So it was like trading at like 12 10 an ounce. So I was I paid like 14 60 an ounce. And then like within an hour after I bought, they raised that premium from two fifty dollars an ounce up to like three ninety nine dollars an ounce. And then the next day, it now they raised it to four ninety nine dollars an ounce over the silver price because they didn't want to sell a bunch of coins what, at what they uh, considered too cheap. Yeah, that might be a good idea, Paul. I could do something like that. And, and Mikey, I, I haven't thought about that. Because I've got a bunch of stuff. I could probably put a group of stuff together and that you could look up in books and catalogs that would be worth 50 60 70 bucks or more that I'd be willing to sell for 25 bucks. But who knows? It's a mystery to us. You can put U.S. silver coins in great. Okay, yeah. Might consider doing that sometime just for fun. Um, another later in the catalog, you'll see I got a bunch of these too listed. Um, I got a pretty good group of some harder to find Mexican Libertads, one ounce silver. Some of these are um, if you, to get the new ones each year. It's not that difficult. You just gotta pay whatever the bullion sells. But the mintages of these are way lower than Silver Eagles. So some of these dates are real hard to find. You look up some of the dates that are in the catalog here, and um, they sell for 40 50 60 bucks on eBay sometimes. Now, sometimes you can get them for 25 30 bucks, but there's a... I got 2001, 2002, 2003. There's a 2009, 2010. I got several 2012s, 2013. Uh, I think 20... Yeah, I got a whole other pile of them here. Hold on. Yeah. 2013s, 2014, 15, 16, and 2018. So if you collect the Mexican Libertad design, which is just, you know, if you haven't really taken a close look, it's a real beautiful design. I've got a lot of these earlier, tougher to find dates. Or, so maybe there's one or more that you can use. Or if you just want to start stacking up some cooler pieces that usually go for a premium, then uh, that's up to you as well. And then I got a couple of these listed too. This is the light, little bit older design. This is the 1984 version. Again, another beautiful coin though. 
a few of these listed, plus that orig that full roll that you guys saw in there. Got your eye on a coin on my website. Uh-oh. Hopefully it's not already sold, because I don't update my website as much as I should. <laughs> But, yeah, if you, anybody ever has any questions about anything on my website, feel free to email. And sometimes the prices on there are admittedly pretty aggressive. But, um, you know, sometimes I have some room to work with on them, too. This one's here is towards the end of the list. This is the two-ounce silver privateer. Nice, thick two-ounce silver bullion piece. Real popular. And this is the first. They did several designs of these i don't remember how many of them came out or how many years they did this but um this is the first year of issue so it's uh one of the ones that are more in demand these things go anywhere from 50 to 75 bucks on ebay and i think i'm starting it uh just well barely over what the silver price was a week ago but uh starting it at 40 bucks which is real fair i think on this and under what it's really worth but if you need this one, for, or if you've been collecting these, or you just want a really cool two ounce silver round, there you go. Yeah, they're really cool. I like them too. All right, what else do we got? If any here has ever heard me talk, you probably know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Love the privateer. All right, let me take a look through the catalog real quick to see if there's anything else I really have to show you. Actually, let me get this one out to see what it looks like under the camera because I just got it not too long ago and I really didn't look at it that closely. This one here I'm going to show you is the 1909 VDB colorfully toned lot number 11. So we'll take a look and see what that looks like under here. We'll look at that one together. That one's pretty. This one I think would grade either MS64 brown or MS65 brown. Hey there Mullins, what's up? And Don Berry, how you doing? Taking a look at some coins. So yeah, this would look good in some people's typesets, I'm sure. Or you're just your set of Lincoln cents if you're not going for full red coins. Yeah, I think it would grade 64 brown, maybe 65 brown if they really liked the color. I would, I feel more comfortable calling it a 64 brown. I think it's a good deal. If not, I'll keep it. All right, some of you guys came in. Green Go, good to see ya. We'll go type this in. It's in the description below, but I'll type it in there too so the link to the auction catalog pops up for everybody. Been going for about an hour now, so I won't go too much longer if nobody else wants to see any of the other specific lots. I don't want to take up too much of your time today. But remember, I got the auction set to go on uh, March 21st. I'm going to start at around noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. I know I'll, there's other streams going on, and unfortunately there's conflicts. But um, if you know for sure you can't make it and you, or you think you're going to miss... Uh, no, Paul Hampton, that's all the coin. That's nothing. None of that's on the flip at all. That was all on the coin. Um, if, if, anybody, if you know that you can't make it, you can go ahead and send me email and let me know that uh what you want to bid on and what you're willing to pay and i'm not going to automatically just run you up to your maximum of course i'll just execute your bids as if you were there live um and if someone outbid you someone outbid you if not then uh you'll win it at one bidding increment over the second place bidder so colin wants to see some puzzle coins all right that's a good idea i'll show some of those well, actually, I'll show one of them, at least, because the others are pretty much the same. If I can find the good one here. So you can see through the light there, all the puzzle. That's why I put the white background there, so you can see that it's a puzzle. But when I take that away, 
you can see the coin a lot better. This one here is the Mount Rushmore. And it's been hand cut. Real thin jeweler's blade, little tiny jigsaw. And all the pieces, the edges of them, the corners, you know, been polished so there's no burrs on them or anything. Um, they're real fun. They're not that easy to put together. But um, they make great gifts. I know that. I sell a bunch of them at coin shows. And they're pretty cool. So I got four different ones I listed in the catalog available. That's the Mount Rushmore America, the beautiful quarter. I also have the 2010 Yosemite the 2010 Grand Canyon, and the 2001 New York State Quarter. Green, do I have any Bahamas silver coins? I don't have any in the auction, but um, I do happen to have this one just sitting on my desk. It's a $5 large, like one and a quarter ounce silver proof, 1978, real low mintage. But didn't put that one in the auction. Did we look at lot number 68? I don't know. Let me take a look. What's lot number 68? The Baseball Hall of Fame cataloged in an unsealed NGC holder. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look. Why don't we? Yeah, another monster auction, Gringo. I know it's just over 100 lots. Um... But if you've been through my first two auctions, the first one was 155 lots. The second one I cut down to maybe like 85 lots or so. Um, I just, uh, I guess I just go through them a lot faster than a lot of the other auctioneers here on YouTube go. Because I see a lot of other auctions. It takes them four hours to go through 25 or 30 lots. And I mean, I'll go through 100 lots in that same time. So I'm not too worried. Yeah, I'd probably leave some money on the table by not giving people enough time to like sit there and mull it over and think about it but i got a lot of stuff i'd like to sell i mean i got too much stuff so i'd rather do one big auction like this maybe once or a month or once every two months than to do a weekly auction of like 20 or 30 items because the thing i hate the most about doing all this is the whole packing up and shipping and doing all that so if i only have to do that one time versus four times then uh that's the way i'd rather do it Anyway, this here is lot 68, just a 2014 Baseball Hall of Fame silver dollar. The first curved coin they did, real thick NGC holder, MS69. And what's cool about this one is you can just take the lid right off because NGC messed up and didn't seal it. So what they do is they usually put the coins in these holders, put them in there, and they put it in a machine that like sonically seals, like kind of like welds the plastic all the way around and... They skip that set, so they skip that step. So, there you go. Now we could have returned this to NGC with, you know, and they probably would have even paid the shipping back and forth. It would have taken another what month or two to get the coin back after they did that. But some people like to collect this kind of thing and show the mistakes the grading companies can make sometimes just for fun. And the coin's not worth a ton of money because of an MS69 grade. So, you know, just something fun and. Maybe you'd like to have that. Maybe it'll be a fun uh, show and tell you could take to your local coin club meeting once coin clubs are allowed to meet again and have fun with it. And I got to keep the rubber band around it. Otherwise, we might lose the coin. Now, I missed another one. Somebody was asking about another coin. The Canadian dollar with the tiger privy. Yes, sir. Let me make sure I find the right one here. That's the one with the snake privy. That one's the sheep. They're all in boxes that look exactly the same, so I gotta do a little bit of hunting. And of course, it's the last one I grab. So there they are. They're in these little red boxes. They have a certificate of authenticity that says that these were made for the like different lunar years. This one's the tiger privy, 9999. It's four nines pure silver, one troy ounce. Uh, limited to a mintage of 25,000 worldwide. So the maximum mintage was 25,000. I have no idea if they actually made 25,000. A lot of times when they have a maximum mintage, they don't make the full number. But it's a uh, reverse proof. So we got the field is like the lighter satin look. And then the maple leaf part is the polished part. And then the same thing on the other side. 
And then it's got the privy mark there, which I'll pop under the microscope so you can see. It's kind of like a stylized tiger design. Kind of. I didn't know what it was really. I was trying to figure figure out what. It, I knew it was some kind of a cat, but the um, certificate of authenticity actually calls it tiger. So that's what that is. So hopefully that gives you a look of what you wanted to see there. Mikey did a great deal. Got some mercury dime with Tony. Cool. Asked if I had any Bahamas silver coins. Not in the auction, but I, I showed you I have this one here. It's a $5 Bahamas. 1978 proof. And if you look at the mintage on these, I think it's real low mintage, too. One, It's 1 1.25 ounces of, of uh, sterling silver. There you go, Green Go. It's uh, we're you got that one in the auction coming up. Then, if, if that's something that's of interest to you, and we're starting that one. Let me look at it. We're starting it at forty bucks. Those are pretty tough. And if you can't make the auction for some reason and you want to get a bid in, just send me an email and maybe it'll hold up or maybe you'll get outbid. I don't know. Ulrich, thanks for coming in. Good to see you. Let me know if you guys have any questions on any of these. Uh, Liberty Seeker, how's it going? Liberty Seeker, I did bump up the auction a little bit earlier because I know you said you're going to start one Saturday afternoon, you told me earlier, so trying to put a little bit more room there so we're not stepping on each other's toes. And in doing so, of course, I find out that I moved it up early enough to now I'm messing up silver nitrates auction, but I think he said he might do something Sunday instead of Saturday now, which I don't know. Can't be can't can't get it right to make everybody happy, I guess. So anyway, I did I did move it up a little bit, so you should be able to do yours when you were talking about, I think. So without without me stepping on your toes at least. Can't speak for anybody else, so hey there, she pirate, good to see ya. Sheldon goes, Boomba shoots. And I know Sheldon wanted to see this one because he had already asked about it, the one right there at the end of the auction, the priceless coin. I'll get that under there again for those of you who may have missed it a minute ago when I did show it. Actually, I got to wait for my camera to focus a little bit. So while we're waiting for that, I'll go ahead and let you guys see the catalog link pop up again. And we'll go here. So this is going to be, this is the last one that's in the catalog right now. This is the 1909 Barber Quarter with the Michael Kittle Rare Coins counter stamp. So, again, I had a few of these made just kind of as test pieces, just to have some fun. Mostly it's a punch we had made to make our own silver bars or copper bullion bars. Uh, we're still doing that. We've just made a couple of prototypes so far, but this is kind of just a fun piece and had a few of them made. So, figure we'd auction one off at the end of the auction and... Um, Gonna start it at a buck, and the value I put on it in the catalog is priceless. I mean, how how, how can you put a price on this? It's a Michael Kittle rare coins, nineteen oh nine bar recorder. So, and just so you guys can see what the full design looks like, a little easier. Here's what it looks like. Here's a test uh, brass piece that we put the stamp on, and on the other side, it'll say "Good for one dollar in trade." So just something fun. And there are, like I mentioned earlier, there are, that went crazy. That's my uh, focus. That's what it does. Um, I did not put them in the catalog. They will be added when I revise it. So after that lot, number 108, lots number 109, 110, and 111 are copies of the Cherry Pickers Guide, back issues. Uh, I know a lot of people have trouble finding these. They've been out of print for a long time. And I know they're supposedly coming back into print. I mean, I don't know exactly when. Sometimes you can find them, but sometimes they're on eBay for a couple hundred bucks, too. But anyway, this one is the fourth edition, volume one. It goes the you know half cents through the nickels. We also have fourth edition, volume two, which is the half dimes through the gold and the commemoratives. And they're in pretty good shape, the books. And then there's 5th edition volume 2, which is the half dimes, the gold, and the commemoratives. 
So if anybody needs copies of the Cherry Pickers Guide and don't want to wait for the new ones to come out, or I'm going to start all these at a buck each at the end of the auction. They'll be, they'll be listed in the catalog, but I have to put them at the end because I don't want to mess up all the lot numbers. So they'll start at a buck each, and if you guys need Cherry Pickers Guides, we have Cherry Pickers Guides. So hopefully they sell for more than a dollar each because it's a pain in the butt to ship those. And Black Steel, the newest fan. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate that. Again, we got the catalog there if anybody needs it. It's on the description below. If, any, if you're watching this later and you have any questions on any of the coins or if you want to put bids in on anything, please send me emails by Friday evening just so I have time to you know, process the bids and make up a list of which ones I have to bid on for different people and who I have to bid them for. Please don't send me an email like five minutes before the auction actually starts and say, here's my bids on 20 different items because that's not going to be fun, especially if a, a more than one person does that. So, um, And I'd really, if you have a whole bunch of things you'd want to bid on, I'd prefer that you actually just come to the auction and be part of it. Um, I understand if you can't, though, but especially if there's just a couple things that you know you would be upset if they sold too cheap. Send me that email and I'll process the bids for you. I'm happy to do it. All right, I'm going to be shutting this down here pretty soon if uh, nobody else has any questions on any of the items or doesn't want to take a look at anything. i uh, got a bunch of certified Morgan dollars here. Actually, I'm going to show you a couple of those anyway if nobody else wants to see them. Uh, Farm Dog, good to see you. Let's see which one I wanted to show you. There's a couple toned ones which look pretty nice. So if you guys are following along at home, lot number 53 is a pair of Morgan dollars. And these are cool. They're 1904 New Orleans. And if you look at the certification number, 330204-025, 330204-029. So the first six digits are the same. That's the order number that these were submitted on. And then this was coin number 25 in the order. And this was coin number 29 in the order. So these were part of an original submission more than 20 years ago, these are the old, thick NGC fatty holders is what they call them. And uh, it's just a nice matched pair of 1904 New Orleans Morgan dollars. And these holders are really nice condition for the older NGC holders. So pretty collectible for people that like that kind of thing. And not only that, the coins have a little bit of color to them too. So let me move some stuff and we'll take a couple close-ups of these coins once my camera focuses down on it. Got to get, get some stuff out of the way there. But yeah, I'm selling these just because these coins have been together ever since they were submitted at NGC. And probably for many years. I got to get the, the cameras focusing on, on, the, on into infinity and it's not being cooperative. So sorry about that. Yeah, just because they've been together for pretty much forever, uh, I want to keep them together. So these two will be sold in a lot. And, of course, I can't get my camera to focus right now. That's great. Let me try switching from auto to manual. There we go. Just had to recycle it. Sorry about that, guys. Now let me switch back over. Now I think it's worth messing around with that camera and the lens just so I can show you that right there, what they look like, because the webcam just doesn't pick that up. A nice little rainbow rim toning on this one. the matched one here this is the other one just a nice match for it Don Berry there's no real I don't think there's any gold in this auction at all that dose pesos on there in there under the scope when you before under the microscope just to bother you now that's actually gonna be one of the prizes of my uh, 2,000 subscriber giveaway someday when I get more than 2,000 subscribers right now I'm at like 1910 so could be in a week or two or could be in a couple months depending on how long it takes but that'll be one of the prizes but yeah a couple nice 1904 dollars in old holders 
Yeah, that's those peso here under the microscope there in the corner. That's going to be one of the prizes. I did a community on my community tab. I did a poll maybe a week or two ago asking if people would rather me give away a big piece of silver or a little piece of gold or if they'd rather me give away both. And of course, you know, almost everybody said, no, we want you to give away both. So that there will be the little piece of gold as one of the prizes. So when I guess once I get a little closer to the 2000 subscribers, uh, I'll probably post a video talking about it. Awesome. I'm in line for the cherry pickers guides. Very good. So yeah, after this, I'll update the catalog and then re-upload it. So if you then re-download it later, or if you're watching this later, you'll probably be wondering what I'm talking about because it'll already be in the catalog by then. Um, but yeah, I'll add those to the end there because I inadvertently left those off. I was kind of spent too much time on Jeeping John's channel earlier just chatting about stuff instead of working on this. Uh, another cool one that you guys might want to take a quick look at is lot 105. It's the U.S. It's not U.S. Philippines. It's, a, it's right after the Philippines got their independence after World War II. It's the MacArthur Commemorative. It's a one peso coin from the Philippines that was minted at the San Francisco Mint. Real popular coin. This is a nice uncirculated example. 1947S Philippines General MacArthur Commemorative. Big silver coin from the San Francisco Mint, but it's a Philippines coin. So that one's cool. What else do I got here? Oh, I got some of these. People like these, I think. Well, first I got these. Let's show those first. I don't remember what lot numbers these are, but I got a couple gem uncirculated war nickels, a 45P and a 45S. I mean, those are nice. Somebody, I know people like war nickels. How about nice MS-65 ones? They're silver. They're in the auction. You could have them just by bidding. Got those, and what was I trying to show you, though? Now I forgot. I'll find it. That's right here. You can hear this one coming. PCGS Rattler. Walking Liberty Half Dollar, MS-65 condition, 1943. Beautiful coin. First generation PCGS holder. They used this holder design from 1986 through 1989. That's it. So this has been in this holder for over 30 years, untouched. And a lot of collectors pay a nice little premium because of that. So they're highly collectible. Every day people are cracking coins out of these, so there's less and less of them every day. Um, so get one of those in your collection and it is definitely a nicer coin MS-65 condition Tonto Stackins good to see you thanks for coming in I'll go ahead and put the little thing here for the catalog one more time but it's also in the description below you got that night bot working it actually worked I couldn't believe it. I just read the directions and there you go. It works. Imagine that. Things actually working like they're supposed to. Really happy about that. Um, let me just flip through these coins. I got some other 09 VDBs. I got a couple other large cents. Got a bunch of just, you know, kind of inexpensive slab coins. Got a Mercury dime here. A couple other Franklin half dollars. A bunch of Morgan dollars. Uh, some Silver Eagles, some MS-70 Silver Eagles, 2016. Got some diff couple different sets. I'll show this one more here, too, unless someone's going to ask uh, to see anything specific. So if there's anything specific on the list you want to see, just definitely let me know, and I'll go to it instead of just showing you the things that I want to show you. But this one here is lot number 74. I wrote this up on the auction catalog as a group of three 2009 Philadelphia partial mint sets with packaging errors. I call it an interesting group of 54 coins. And I didn't even put a price or a, a reserve on it because I just forgot to put it. So I'll have to correct that as well. But what this is, three of the same set, these are half of a 2009 mint set, is the bottom of your left, what be that, big silver? Yeah, this is in the auction. It's a... 1992 10-ounce silver kookaburra. 1992. Earlier date. Definitely goes for a premium. 
This one's a little bit cheaper because it only has half of a capsule. That's why it's in a plastic bag. It has the bottom half of the capsule only. The top is long gone. But yeah, this is lot number 74. I'll have to come up with a price and put it on there. We'll start it off relatively cheap, but it's only the Philadelphia part. There's also a Denver part of these sets usually. Hey, Peggy, thanks very much for coming in. Appreciate that. So what this is, it's three of the same set, which is, again, half of the full mint set. So in the full set, you got the $5, the four cents from that year, the five quarters, or sorry, six quarters, nickel, dime, and half. So there's all the different coins. Brilliant uncirculated condition, no problem, right? The next one we have here, same thing, but it appears to be missing one of the cents. Uh-oh. But it's not missing the cents. It's a packaging error. Before it was sealed up, that cent got put in there with the Sacagawea dollar. And that didn't just slide from one. These are totally sealed and done by the mint that way. Just a mistake. Kind of fun, though, if you like that kind of stuff. I mean, people collect error coins. People collect error prints on paper money. Some people collect error packaging. But not only is that cool, it goes one further. This one appears to be missing two cents. But once again, no coins are missing. They're just in there with the dollars. Again, totally sealed up. They're in there. The coins are fine. It's just a U.S. Mint packaging error. And I figured this is just a cool way to show them off. If you just had one of these, it's not as cool. So you need the set of all three of these to show people exactly what it's supposed to be. And then how these errors progress. So all three of these are one lot. And that's going to be lot number 74. And just face value, I mean, we got the $5, a whole bunch of quarters. There's like probably $7 face value in each one of these. So that's got to be at least 20 bucks face value altogether. Um, I'll probably have to start this at at least, you know, $25, $30. And then who knows what it's really worth, though. It's just kind of fun. What I'll probably do is I'll probably look up what a 2009 mint set is and see what half of that's worth at least. Because I don't know if the 2009 mint set's even better. But that'll be on the revised copy of the catalog. Sorry about that. Michael, can I send you money well packaged in the mail if I want something in the auction? Okay, that's a good question. All auction items need to be paid promptly after you win. Please do not buy a bunch of stuff in the auction and then tell me, oh, can I pay you like two or three weeks from now? Well, no. But you know what? If that's the only, if there's a couple things you really want and that's the only way you can do it, if you tell me that in advance and tell me which items you're interested in, there's a chance I might say on that one, yeah, you know what, that's fine. Go ahead, and if you end up winning, I can wait that week or two, whatever it is. But otherwise, if you're bidding on a bunch of stuff, I'll send out invoices that night or the next day, depending on how tired I am after the auction. And I would hope that they're paid for, you know, within 24, 48 hours after me sending you an invoice by PayPal. Um, and then I'll ship them right out in the mail. It's just that easy. Now, if you don't have PayPal and PayPal doesn't work for you, Mikey, go ahead and let me know. Cash is fine. You can send me a check or whatever. As long as you let me know in advance, please don't bid on like 40 of the 100 items, win a whole bunch of stuff, end up owing me $2,000 and then say, oh yeah, by the way, um, I'm going to send you cash or, oh, can I send you a check in two weeks or something? Just just let me know ahead of time and, and then I'm fine with it. So that, that's cool. I just don't want to be surprised later. So hopefully that answers the question. So yeah, it should be fine, Mikey. Just let me know what you're interested in or about how much you're thinking. And you know if it's just a couple items here and there or something, or I'm sure we can figure it out and be happy with it. But just remember, if you end up sending cash in the mail, I mean, I can't be responsible for that. It's, you know, you got to make sure if it doesn't get to me, I don't, sh I'm not going to ship the items out until I'm paid. So I can't just drop them in the mail and then you know, when, when you say that the checks in the mail or cash is on the way, so. The BU to AU wheat scent rolls, okay. Yeah, I got a couple rolls this time. I'll show those real quick since you asked about them. This one here is a roll of 1960s. It's in a, one of those shrink tubes. Can't get it open, at least not with your hands. There's ways to get these open. Usually it involves tools or something, but 
there's that. There's also a 58 Philadelphia roll. This one you can open. You can get the coins out. BU Wheat Sense. Nice coins. And then there, the other roll was right here. This is a 1956 Denver roll. Shrink tube. Can't get it open again. But looking through the ends, they look like really nice BU Red Wheat Scents, 1956 Ds. And I do have one more BU roll here. These are 1959 Roosevelt Dimes. And you can just see nice, brilliant, uncirculated silver Roosevelt Dimes. 50 of them, full roll. And those are 1959 Philadelphias. All right. And PayPal address and email address are the same. I'll just go ahead and put that in there too. Certified check right after the auction coin. That's probably fine. Just um, if you're planning on doing something like that, just give me the heads up. If if it's just a few items or a couple hundred bucks or something, that's one thing. But if you're going to be bidding on a bunch of stuff to where it's going to be over a thousand bucks, don't surprise me with that like afterward. Just give me the heads up ahead of time if that's what you're thinking. So don't let Jeepin see the, the Oh, yeah, these shrinks. Yeah, I got to cover those up. <laughs> now, he's already been trying to buy them before the auction even starts because he's heard. He knew I had some, but can't do that. You got to give everybody a shot at him. And if he doesn't bid on him, somebody else will. That's fine. All right. Anybody else have any other questions? Because otherwise, I'm going to say some goodbyes here and probably let you guys be on your day. Anybody else have any other questions on the catalog? And remember that we do not call them pennies. We call them cents. I want to see if this works again. We'll see. Don Barry, hope you're having a great afternoon. Thanks for coming on in here. I am a true numismatist. Michael Kittle Rare Coin speaks the truth and is the number four person to join Team Cent. There we go. Again, me voting for that again, I'm kind of like padding the vote there a little bit, of course, but you know, it's my channel. I can do it. So. <laughs> Even though other people have joined Team Penny, unfortunately, but <laughs> not nah, just something fun there. I'll be at the auction. Great preview. Thanks, Mikey. I appreciate that. Again, anybody watching now or later before the auction, um, if you need to uh, send me an email to ask questions on any of these, let me know. If you know you're not going to be at the live auction on Saturday, please um, go ahead and uh, send me your bids. Try to get them in before Friday night so I have time to write them down and make sure that I have them on my list to execute those bids. Um, and remember, so for example, on this tube, I think I'm starting it at maybe like 10 bucks or one of the, of the wheat cents. If you're willing to pay 50 bucks on it, go ahead and tell me you're willing to pay 50 bucks. I'm not just going to run you up to 50. I'll still start it at $10. Then when Jeeping John comes in here and bids 11. I'll say, oh, Mikey's bidding 12, and then John will bid 15. I'll say, Mikey's bidding 18. And if it ends there, you win it at 18 bucks. You're not going to run you all the way up to your maximum. That's only going to be known to me, and, you know, I'm not going to, you know, it'll be a fair auction. I'm not going to, I just want to give you guys the chance to, uh, give you the chance to uh, get your bids in if you're not going to be here. Linda Wallace, thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Got those four-leaf clovers. Perfect. Yeah, well, it's almost like we didn't have St. Patrick's Day. I wasn't able to really celebrate it this year, unfortunately. But, hey, look at that. <laughs> Number seven on Team Scent. Even though uh, Lincoln joined Team Penny earlier, I was a little disappointed with that, but I'll live. <laughs> uh, Boomba Shoots. Very, very cool. All right. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, during this uh, live auction... I do have some items. I will we will we'll have some giveaways during the stream. I don't know exactly what we have. I know I got maybe a couple silver dimes, maybe some quarters, some halves. I don't know. Maybe some people still need some of the 2020 bat quarters from America Samoa. I still got a bunch of those. Got the P's, the D's, and the S's. Maybe we can give away some of those if anybody needs any. Um, yeah, should be fun. And I don't know, I haven't picked an end of the stream 
giveaway prize yet, but I'll come up with something you know cool for that too. So, all right, in a coin store and heard an old guy calling U.S. cents penny, and he never knew the right word. Yeah, a lot of people do. And believe me, when I go to the bank and ask for rolls, I don't ask for cent rolls because they don't know what I'm talking about. Then I ask for penny rolls. But you know, when I'm at a coin show or a coin club or I'm on here talking the coin people. You know, hey, we're all here to try to help each other become better numismatists, so let's uh, try to use the right words. That's at least my thinking on it. Of course, you know, I put the option in there to vote for Penny if, if you guys disagree and are going to be always saying Penny even though you know you're wrong. That's fine. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys are having a good week, um, dealing with things the best you can. Everybody be safe. Again, my email, I'll put it up here one more time. It's always in the description of all my videos. It's also on the About page of my YouTube. It's on my website. It's everywhere. You guys can always get in touch with me there. Just go ahead and send me an email if you got questions on any of this. Getting more people. Lady Kid Nichols and Gareth Bates. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate that. Again, we got the auction catalog for Saturday's auction in the description below. If you have uh, questions on any of the items, please send me an email because we're going to be ending this stream shortly. But if I keep getting cool people coming in like Gareth and Lady Kid Nichols, i got to keep saying hi to everybody. I just can't say goodbye. <laughs> Name change. I see who you are there. S. Robbins, look at you coming in there. Thanks for coming in. Good to see you. But yeah, we're just getting ready to wrap it up. So you just missed it, S. Robbins. But if you want, we're going to be doing an auction Saturday. Going to start noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. Got the auction catalog linked in the description below. It's going to be staying. I mean, as this video will be up until the auction, of course. You'll be able to look at that catalog anytime. Um... If you have questions on any of the items, email me. If, if you can't be at the auction, but you definitely want to bid on some stuff, email me and let me know that you want to bid on certain things, and I'll put bid in, bids in for you. Easy as that. All right. I think we've talked enough, showed enough coins. I got a big pile of coins here. Now I got to clean all this up and put them all back, but I guess I got until Saturday to do that. So take care, everyone. Have a great week. Be safe. Uh, Ooh, can't wait to get my hand on the barb recorder. Uh-oh, we got somebody going for the special barb recorder then. Perfect. All right, Jacob, thanks for coming in here. Everybody else, thanks for coming in. We'll see you around uh, the rest of the YouTubes. There's lots of good streams going on. Hey, anybody know any good streams going on right now? Let's take a look. So maybe we can all go say hi to somebody. I always hate just to leave you all and without any direction, leave you out there wandering on your own in the big wastelands of YouTube. I want to give you a little bit of guidance if I can. So let's see who's streaming right now. Anybody? I don't even see anybody streaming right now. So I guess maybe we're just going to be on our own. All right. I guess if any of you guys know anybody streaming, shout out right now. Otherwise, like Farm Dog just said, we're going to say see ya. Ask Robin, see you soon. Paul, take care. Lady Kid, Mikey, Jacob, everybody else, Linda. Thanks again, guys. Really appreciate all your support and um, hope to see a lot of you at the auction. And those of you I do not see at the auction, I hope to see some bids in the email. Take care, everybody.